In this paper, I try to study the relationship between the uh, topologies of the financial system and the, uh, its relationship with the uh, financial stability. So the literature starts by a similar article by Alan Gill, 2000 GP paper. They state that a highly connected financial network will promote uh, financial stability because of a co-insurance mechanism. They argue that if one bank fails, other banks in a connected financial system will uh, help out this bank. So the system will be less likely to fail as a whole. And recent literature, especially as MOOC 2015 AER, they state that the relationship may not be monotonic due to a propagation mechanism because the uh, losses might be easily propagated to other banks. So what this paper does is that I, uh, I, sh I, I state that uh, all those arguments are correct. However, they, they missed one essential uh, uh, critical point because they all assume that the initial loss are exogenous and they either study whether those losses are co-insured or propagated. However, they, the, uh, the happening of the initial loss is not uh, an exogenous uh, uh, event and it's not an act of God. Banks choose their uh, risk exposure endogenously. That means a uh, bank, after observing the financial system uh, of, their, uh, of, of the network structure, they endogenously choose how much risk they're going to take. So that means I show in this paper, banks in any financial network will choose greater risk exposure than standalone bank. And uh, that's particularly true for banks in highly connected networks, for example, a complete network, or uh, in a network with more counterparties, there are fewer counterparties. Uh, in addition, I also show that banks uh, indulgently expose to correlated risks and uh, that make the problem even worse because uh, if one bank fails, other banks are more likely to fail together intrinsically. So that partially explains uh, in the 2008 global financial crisis why banks uh, made, made similar failed bets on the housing market and they also have similar exposure on the M MBS market. So, so from the same line of reasoning, this paper also proposed uh, several policy recommendations. The first one is the equity ratio requirement. I show that equity ratio requirement not only directly reduce banks' risk-taking incentive directly, uh, as in Jensen Mackling, um, they also have a, a network multiplier effect. That means when one bank's equity ratio increases, the other banks in the same financial network, their risk exposure will decrease as well. So we do this as network effect from the equity ratio requirement. The, the, the second uh, policy recommendation from, uh, from this paper is uh, I show that a government bailout, uh, even an implicit one, uh, will promote the financial stability that's in contrast to the conventional wisdom, which states that a government bailout will encourage excessive risk. Um, what this paper shows is, is that a government bailout will, and they will stop the loss uh, of some particular uh, of the some particular failed banks at the origin. So other banks in the same financial network will not uh, fear that the loss will propagate uh, to them. So in the beginning, they will not. Uh, uh, be exposed to the uh, risk-taking externality from other banks. Therefore, uh, a government bailout in equilibrium will reduce the, uh, the risk-taking of, of every bank in the financial system. Uh, that's that's what, pretty much what I show in this paper. Thanks.